Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, UAW family. You know, it's it's great to be here at Local 900. It's, yeah. What, what we say historic Local 900 because this is ground zero for a stand-up strike 11 months ago. I'm very proud on behalf of the UAW, Region 1A, and all of our executive board and all of our membership to welcome Vice President Kamala Harris and Governor Tim Walls to our house, to Labor's house. And we thank them for choosing one of their first visits with workers to be in the house of the UAW. You know, I don't have to say this, I think you already know this, but what's at stake in this election? It's very simple. Everything is at stake. It's about a choice of whether we continue forward or whether we go backwards. That's right. You know, this is a which side are you on moment. And the choice cannot be any clearer. On one side, we got the Harris Walls team. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is one of us. Governor Tim Walls is one of us. You know, they're working class people. They have working class roots. They know struggle. They know what it's like to live paycheck to paycheck. You think about this. Vice President Harris talked yesterday about how she's had a first job at McDonald's. Governor Wall has been a school teacher. We've seen what this, what this government, what the Republican Party in particular, has done to education in our lifetimes. You know, that's the difference. They've spent a career serving, serving other people and fighting for other people and not forgetting where they come from. That's right. That's right. That's right. On the other side, we got the Trump Vance, what I call the Trump Vance disaster. Yes, we know who Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are. Yes. Their words and their actions and their body of work tell the entire story and they tell everything we need to know. They spent their lives serving themselves, representing the billionaire class and enriching themselves at the expense of the working class. You know, Donald Trump calls me stupid. <laughs> and you know why? Because he thinks auto workers are stupid. But we're not stupid. We don't fall for Trump's alternative facts, or what we all call lies. This isn't about opinions. This election's not about party politics. All we have to do is look at these candidates in their own words and actions. That's all the facts we need. And that paints a very clear picture of which side the candidates are on. You look at Trump. In the recession, he blamed auto workers for what was wrong with these companies. And we all know damn good well, it wasn't the auto workers to blame. It was banks that went out of control with a mortgage situation. And that threw our economy in chaos. It was not the workers. In 15, he talked about doing a rotation of our jobs out of the Midwest, our good paying jobs, somewhere else where they pay less money. So we'd be begging for our jobs back for less. 2019, when he was president, plants were closing. GM was on strike for 40 days, and Donald Trump was missing in action. In the 2023 Big Three strike, in our stand-up strike, 
He was nowhere to be found except when he called one of his billionaire buddies and went to a business, a non-union business here in town, and paid people $20,000 to hold up signs saying auto workers for Trump. The man's a con man. And now you look at the body of work with Vice President Harris and Tim Walls. You know, Vice President Harris bet on the auto workers. In the 2019 strike at GM, you know who was on the picket line with striking workers? Kamala Harris was. She stood shoulder to shoulder with our members. She helped, as vice president, create auto jobs in the United States of America to bring work back here. Those, yeah. The Lordstown assembly workers were left behind by Donald Trump. Kamala Harris was part of the solution. They brought a battery plant to Lordstown, Ohio. And those workers that were left behind in Lordstown that were transferred all over the country, now they're returning back home to Lordstown because of her. She worked with us to save a community in Belvedere, Illinois, that was written off for dead. You know, in the 2023 Big Three stand-up strike, you know where Governor Tim Walls was? He was standing on the picket line with striking workers, too. You got two people up here that have stood on the picket line with striking UAW members. That's a place Donald Trump will never be. Governor Walls is also a proud union member. He's a teacher. You know, anyone can be your friend when the sun's shining and things are going great. But you find out who your friends are when things get tough. And you know, when we, took, when we look at tough times, when we've been in tough times, we see who chose to stand with us and who chose to sit on the sidelines and do nothing. You know, there's a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that I love, you know, and it says, in the end, we won't remember the words of our enemies, but we will remember the silence of our friends. And UAW family, this is not a time to be silent. This is not a time to sit back and hope for the best. This is our generation's defining moment. Everything is at stake. Future generations are at stake here. Whenever we needed help, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls answered the call, and they picked a side. They chose to show up, and they chose to stand up. So now it's our turn to stand up, to speak up, and to show up for them. You know, in the UAW, we moved mountains in the last year and a half. And I got to tell you, when I got elected president a little over a year and a half ago, we had 90 days, 90 days to prepare for Big Three bargaining. And we did, and in 90 days, we won. That's right, that's right. That's right. We went to organize Volkswagen in the South, a yeah. place people said we couldn't win. In a hundred days, we filed for an election, and we won. Yeah. And as of today, we've got 89 days. We've got 89 days to ensure that we put Kamala Harris and Tim Walls in the White House. We won, and we're going to continue to win because we stand up together in solidarity. There's a reason UAW begins with the word united, because that's the key to winning. So UAW family, are you ready to stand up for the Harris Walls ticket?
are you? Are you ready to speak up for the Harris Walls ticket? And are you ready to show up for the Harris Walls ticket? I know you are. So UAW family, it's time to go to work. And it is my ultimate honor to introduce Governor Tim Walls. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the American worker has no greater friend than you and your members. Thank you for what you do every single day. And to the sisters and brothers here in this spot as a union member, uh, thank you for the privilege. This is holy ground for unions, Local 900. And to be here and know, for any union member understands what this place stands for and what it means. And so thank you for having me here. And to each and every one of you, thank you for the privilege of walking that picket line with you last year. Thank you for allowing us to lift up our voices. And in Minnesota, the work that you did, it didn't just benefit UAW workers, it benefited all workers. So I couldn't be prouder to be on this ticket and couldn't be prouder to stand with UAW. Think about this, 89 wake-ups. I've been saying this, 89 days, we can do anything for 89 days. Telling people, sleep when you're dead. We got work to do right now, right now. 89 days to make Kamala Harris the next president of the United States. <laughs> yeah. Look. Yeah. Think, think about, think about this leader that's very simple. She stands on the side of the American people and the American worker. She's the one who took on the predators, the fraudsters, the transnational gangs. And she's the one that stands up against the billionaires in the corporate greed that bring, that bring to it. This is who it is. And she has a long record of delivering for union, union members, and organized labor. All right. Everybody in this room knows, and I keep saying this, this is a bit of preaching to the choir. But the choir needs to sing right now. The choir needs to sing. We know, we know that unions built the middle class. The rest of America has to. You know who doesn't believe that? Donald Trump. He sees the world entirely differently. And it really starts with this. When I look at community and neighbors and unions and the word that Sean said, unity. This guy doesn't know the first thing about unity or service. He's too busy serving himself. Again and again and again, you've seen it. He put himself above us. He weakened our country to strengthen his own hand. He mocks our laws. He sows chaos and division. That says nothing about how he dealt with his president. We lived through it. We lived through it. He froze in the face of COVID, and our neighbors died because of it. And by doing nothing about COVID, he drove this economy into the ground. And I want to be very clear about this because there's a lot of lies that happen when they're here. Violent crime was up when Donald Trump was president. Without even counting his crimes, it was still up. It was still up. So this is very simple. You know it, and it's going to take a heck of a lot of hard work, but this election is a simple choice. What direction and what's our country going to look like? What direction are we going in? You know it. We've said it. Donald Trump's going to take it backwards. He's going to, we aren't going back. We're not 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 going back. Look, and this thing of, of playing dumb while he sits on the planes with these billionaires and says, he does, I don't know anything about Project 2025. I just fly on the planes with them. You know what it's going to do? One of the goals of that plain and simple, and they know this, this has been going on forever. Get rid of labor unions and get rid of the voices that we bring. They can do whatever the hell they want then. If Trump returns, he's going to learn something from the last time. He didn't get the job done. This time, it will be far, far worse, and he will get the job done and make sure that we can't organize collectively to improve our lives. That's what it's coming. So whether he cuts the middle class, makes it more difficult to own a home, whether he repeals the Affordable Care Act so you can't get health insurance, 
are the things that you know they talk about, gutting Social Security and Medicare. You know what? When you got a billion dollars, you don't give a damn about your Social Security check. But if you're like my mom and you depend on the Social Security check as your sole income, it's pretty damn important. And I've been saying it, and you've been hearing me say it. They will ban abortion across this country no matter what Congress says. Now, look, it, damn right it is, and I don't know why this is so simple or so difficult for these people to understand. You know how things work really well in life and really well with your neighbors and really well in communities? When you mind your own damn business, things work better. <laughs> Stay out of our business. Stay out of our business. He's not fighting for you. He doesn't know you. He doesn't care about your family. And his running mate is just as dangerous and backward as he is. So look, we know who they are. The choir's ready to sing. This campaign's about the future, your future. Vice President Harris sure knows that. She grew up in a middle-class family. She goes to work every day making sure families are on the front so that they can get ahead and they can get into the middle class. She believes in something so simple and so beautiful. And when we go to these rallies, I say it too. People drive, they sit in the sun, they get there, they stand next to their neighbor for one simple reason. And just like the vice president says, they believe in their hearts in the promise of America. They believe it. They believe it. So, sisters and brothers in the UAW, how great is this going to be? Please join me in welcoming the next president of the United States, Kamala Harris. to be in the house of labor. It is good to be in the house of labor. Thank you. Please have a seat. Please have a seat. Okay, so let me just say, first of all, can we hear it again for Tim Walls? Isn't he spectacular? You know, I have to tell people that have been asking, well, well, what do you and Tim Walls have in common? I said, well, you know, a whole lot, a whole lot. You know, we grew up the same way. We grew up in a community of people, you know, I mean, he grew up in, in Nebraska. Me, Oakland, California. <laughs> Seemingly worlds apart. But the same people raised us. Good people. Hardworking people. People who had pride in their hard work. You know, people who had pride in knowing that we were a community of people who looked out for each other. You know, raised by a community of folks who understood that the true measure of the strength of a leader is not based on who you beat down, it's based on who you lift up. Amen. And you know, there's some perversion that's happened in our country in the last several years, where there's a suggestion that somehow strength is about making people feel small making people feel alone. But isn't that the very opposite of what we know? Unions know to be strength. It's about the collective. It's about understanding no one should ever be made to fight alone. That we are all in this together. You know, you know why I fought my entire career for unions and labor? Because I understand the concept and the noble concept behind collective bargaining. And here it is. Here it is. Fairness. Yeah. Fairness. It's about saying, hey, in a negotiation, don't we all believe the outcome should be fair? I mean, who could disagree with that? The outcome should be fair. It should be fair. Right? But when you're talking about the individual and a big company, and you're requiring that one individual to nego negotiate against a big company, yeah. how's that outcome going to be fair? Yeah. So collective bargaining is about saying, let the collective come together around a common experience, which at its core is about dignity and the right. dignity of labor. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And then let the people come together to negotiate so you make the balance, and then the outcome will be fair. Right. And isn't that what we're talking about in this here election? Yes. 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 
We're saying we just want fairness. We yeah. want dignity for all people. Yeah. We want to recognize the right all people have to freedom and liberty, to make choices, especially those that are about heart and home, and not have their government telling them what to do. Yeah. Our campaign is about saying we trust the people. Yeah. We see the people. We know the people. You know one of the things I love about our country? We are a nation of people who believe in those ideals that were foundational to what made us so special as a nation. We believe in those ideals. And the Sisters and Brothers of Labor have always fought for those ideals. Always fought for those ideals. And we know we are a work in progress. We haven't yet quite reached all of those ideals, but we will die trying because we love our country and we believe in who we are. And that's what our campaign is about. We love our country. We believe in our country. We believe in each other. We believe in the collective. We're not falling for these folks who are trying to divide us, right. trying to separate us, That's right. That's right. trying to pull us apart. Yeah. That's not where the strength lies. No. And there is that. Yeah. And so I say to all the members of UAW, and Sean Fain is the first who I talked to about this, I am so deeply honored as a lifelong supporter of union labor, for Tim and I to have the endorsement of UAW. So deeply honored. Because you walk your walk. You walk your walk. And what we know, like we have talked about, we got 89 days to get this done. You know, the one thing about all of us, is we like hard work. Hard yeah. work is good work. Yeah. Hard work is good work. Yeah. The thing that we like about hard work is we have fun doing hard work. Because yeah. we know what we stand for. And that's a big part of this campaign. You know, when you know what you stand for, you know what to fight for. We know what we stand for. And we stand for the people. And we stand for the dignity of work. And we stand for freedom. We stand for justice. We stand for equality. And so we will fight for all of it. And the bottom line about UAW is that I also know, and I'll say to all the friends watching, look, even if you're not a member of a union, you better thank unions. For that five-day work week. You better thank you. for that vacation time. So I'm here to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the sisters and brothers of UAW for all you are and all we will do over these next 89 days. God bless you. God bless you.